you're looking for a distraction-free work environment, DOS is a great platform for that. And if you're looking for a great distraction-free word processor, you've got a lot of different options on DOS. You've got WordPerfect, you've got uh, WordStar, there's a lot of different uh, editors out there, word processors out there. Uh, but today I want to show you one other one that's a great balance between providing that distraction-free classic DOS experience uh, while also mixing in some features that will feel quite modern. And that's Microsoft Word for DOS version 5.5. This is a free release that Microsoft made. Microsoft uh, released this eventually for free, uh, not open source, but it's available at no cost from their website. And I'll provide a link to the download in the video description. So let's do a quick uh, uh, tour of what Microsoft Word for DOS 5.5 will let you do. So here I've got the directory for uh, Word 5.5. Uh, and just do a directory, you can see all the files that are in there. In the lower left-hand corner, you can see the executable for Word, and that's just word.exe. Let's go ahead and run Word. Now, you may have noticed that there was a splash screen up here just briefly. Uh, my computer is way too fast for that to uh, show up. So uh, we're just going to jump right to the, uh, the, the standard uh, uh, editor. Uh, this is what you're welcomed with uh, when you use Word, and it's a pretty straightforward... Um, editor and uh, that that triangle you're seeing beneath my uh, my blinking cursor that indicates the end of the document uh, so uh, let's let's go start start uh, typing so I'll just say uh, this is a uh, sample document uh, I am using Microsoft Word or DOS version 5.5 uh, I've got a typo there we'll come back and fix that um, which you can download for free uh, from Microsoft, oops, Microsoft's website. Uh, now it's got a great uh, sort of balance between old and new. And so what do I mean by that? Well, you, obviously you can use up and down. Uh, we can go over here and uh, uh, fix our typo if we like. Uh, and you can also jump around the document using control. So if I do control left, I jump back to the beginning of that word, keep doing control left, it'll keep jumping left by one word. Control right does the same thing. Uh, control up and colon control down will bring me um, up by, I think it's by paragraphs. Let's put it in another paragraph here. And to the end of the document. And then um, uh, this is uh, another sample. Uh, so control, uh, yep, this bring control up, uh, will bring me to the next paragraph. There's a, a blank line here counts as a paragraph. So this is uh, the next paragraph. Uh, and that's control up, control down, and control left, control right will jump to uh, different words. Uh, you can also uh, use some of the shortcuts that you're kind of familiar with on modern word processors. So if I were going to show um, some text samples, so let's try uh, some text samples. Um, you can uh, style words in. I'm going to do control B and normally that would turn on bold, right? That turns on bold here. So I just type the word bold. Uh, control B will turn that off. Comma. Um, and do control I and that will turn on italics. Italics. Control I again will turn it off. Comma. And control U underline. Control U again. And so here I've uh, been able to use the uh, uh, the keyboard shortcuts that I'm kind of used to in uh, uh, from modern word processors, uh, control B, control I, control U. Um, and that's a, a great way to uh, kind of use some of that muscle memory. Uh, now, uh, you'll notice that bold is put in the sort of the bright white, italics is put in the sort of bright cyan, and underline is put in that bright yellow, uh, because this is something you saw a lot in uh, word processors on DOS, is that uh, you couldn't see uh, a preview of your text. It wasn't really WYSIWYG, right? What you see is what you get uh, because it was operating in a plain text mode. One way you could kind of see what your page would look like before you print it is you could go into a, a print preview mode. So if I bring up the menu, uh, hold down Alt, and you can see it's going to highlight uh, these uh, menu items uh, just like standard DOS applications. Alt F will bring up the file menu and then down there is a print preview. Now it's, it's actually going to be too small to see bold, italics, and underline. It's just going to show you a representation of the text. Uh, but this is a great way to kind of see what your text would look like before you print it. Uh, now if I wanted to see, I'll just do escape to get out of that. If I wanted to see uh, bold, italics, and underline in actually bold, italics, and underline, there's a way to do that. Uh, if I go into the view menu, 
So Alt will bring up the uh, highlighted letters and V will bring up the view menu. Down here I can do uh, preferences. And uh, down here um, we've got, I'm just tabbing here, let's go to display. Uh, you've got different ways to uh, show your document. Now it's got these different text modes that you can run in. Or if you keep going down, uh, you can go into the graphics modes. And so it's got 25 lines, 30, 34, uh, 43, and 60 lines. So let's go into the graphics uh, 25, just so we can go from text 25 to graphics 25. Hit return on that, and you can see that now bold, italics, and underline are actually in bold, italics, and underline. So it's a great way to kind of see what you're typing as you type. Uh, let's go ahead and show it on different uh, resolutions. So uh, bring up the view menu again. Um, I don't have to keep bringing down the arrow keys. I can actually uh, just type E to jump into preferences because that's the highlighted one. Uh, I can do D to jump down to the display mode. And I can do uh, 30 or 34. Uh, let's do 43. That's, uh, yeah, that's a little small. Uh, let's, let's bring it back up to view. Uh, e for preferences, D for display. Let's bring it back to 34. And this feels a little more comfortable to me. Um, uh, so we can uh, uh, show that uh, we can do another sample here. Um, well, let's jump back to the top just because we haven't actually lost the whole document. It's, it's, it's starting with that one paragraph. Jump back down to the bottom. You can see here um, uh, more styles of text. Uh, let's try bold, italics, and underline. So it's got these. Uh, I didn't have to do Control B just to uh, start typing in bold and Control I, Control U. I can actually just highlight the word, Control Shift Left. That'll highlight the entire word, underline, and do Control U. All right, not a surprise. That's exactly how it works. Do Control Left, jump back to highlight italics. Control Shift Left will highlight the word, uh, and I can do Control I, or I can go to the menu. Alt and T is the shortcut to get into the format menu because uh, otherwise uh, F is file. So T will bring into the format menu and, and bold italics underline and things like that are going to be character styles. So let's go ahead and just hit return on character. And you can see uh, I can change the font um, and in DOS modern A is really the best one to go with. It's really the one to go with. Um, and if I just do tab, I can jump over here and uh, turn on. Uh, italic. So let's do space, turn on italic, and hit return. Dan has put that word in italics. Uh, then highlight the word uh, bold, let's do control B for bold. So uh, different ways that you can uh, type a document and actually have it appear uh, the way that you would expect it to appear. Um, you know, you're not you're relying on colors, you're actually seeing uh, bold, italics, and underline. Um, and I'll comment that I, I loaded this document, or a similar one, uh, and was able to save it. And Microsoft Word today wasn't able to read it, um, but uh, LibreOffice was, and uh, Google Documents uh, was. It was able to translate that document uh, correctly. Let's just change my view a little bit. This is feeling a little small for me. Uh, e for preferences, D for display, bring up to 30 lines, hit return. That's feeling a little more comfortable for me. Uh, now. Uh, just to show one other thing with styles, I don't know if you use styles in your modern word processors. I rely on styles all the time. It makes my life a lot easier. Uh, so let's go ahead and try some styles. Let's go ahead and first close this document. So I'm going to do file and then close. Uh, I don't care about it. So no, don't save. So let's go ahead and start a new document. File, new. Now I can start with a, a certain style sheet, but I want to show you that you can actually load them on the fly. I'll just do return to start a new document. Uh, now uh, let's do a style. So do an Alt uh, T for the format menu. Uh, and I want to apply a style. Now I could actually modify the style for text that I'm typing in. I can go to the character menu. I can do the paragraph menu. Uh, I can do the alignment and things like that. Um, hit escape out of that. Or I, you know, I can go into the fastest way to do it is to use a style that already exists. So go ahead and apply a style. Um, so what do I want to uh, use? Well, there's nothing in here, right? There's, there's uh, 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 because we haven't loaded a style sheet. So the only thing you're really getting is the normal style, which is just plain text. Hit a backspace on that. So let's go ahead and uh, load a style sheet. 
uh, bring up the format menu and then jump down to attach style sheet. And you can see this list of other style sheets, academic and uh, resume styles and legal documents, things like that. So let's go and bring up an academic style. Uh, so let's hit return on academic. Uh, so now it's, uh, uh, we just want to type in, uh, uh, this is my title, um, and this is the author, and um, uh, section one, uh, this is uh, some sample text uh, that I might write uh, for my uh, document, uh, such as a term paper. I just wanted to get that to wrap lines. So let's go ahead and highlight uh, this paragraph, and now I can go into the style menu under the format menu. Actually, I want to apply a style. I could mouse all the way down there, or keyboard all the way down there, but uh, you could just do Y to bring up apply style. Uh, and now you can see this list of styles that I have. Uh, so if I most uh, term papers would be double spaced, and so yeah, I would uh, use double space. There's a whole bunch of other ones in here. I can do block quotes, uh, bibliography, text, chapter titles, section titles, uh, title page uh, stuff. So up here, uh, we can go ahead and make that a double spaced uh, line, and now it shows you in double space. Uh, here, I jump to the end, jump to the beginning. Uh, I can uh, apply a style here. Uh, Y for apply style, and this was a section title. And there it is, uh, centered and underlined. And then I'm going to just do uh, Control Shift Home, that'll highlight that, and then do uh, the format menu, Y to apply style, and let's make this my title page. Uh, and it's actually kind of messed me up a little bit. Um, so uh, I've got section one. And my text showing up before my uh, title part. So if you can actually see it, that's actually how it's going to show up. So to bring up the file menu, go down to print preview, uh, you can see that that's actually how it's going to look. So um, yeah, I kind of forgot that what I need to do um, is uh, insert a, um, a page break. So we're going to do insert menu and then break and we'll do a page break. And now it's, uh, it's, it should have uh, helped me out. There we go. Uh, so the, uh, the line of dots there indicates that's the page break. And there's my uh, section heading and uh, my term paper. So uh, I might have another section uh, that I might want to uh, do another section title here. So we'll do uh, format, apply style. And this is a uh, section title. Uh, this is uh, section two. And then apply style again. So format menu, apply to apply style, and then go back to my double space. And then uh, this is where I would type the rest of my document. So it's a, a pretty neat way to uh, type a document. Uh, before I stop here, let's go into the pre uh, page preview. Now I've got two uh, pages. So go to the file menu uh, and print preview. And you can see that I actually have a two page document here, right? You can see on the left, uh, the title page, uh, this is my title and this is the author. Uh, and then on the right hand side, you can see section one and a representation of my text uh, in section two. So it's a uh, 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 kind of a way to show that I'm actually typing a document that is uh, applying those styles. Um, and uh, one other thing that this has is uh, tools that you can use uh, for writing. You know, again, it's a um, mix of old and new. So you know, I might have words in here that are misspelled. So uh, this word is misspelled, and I'll use one L. And so I can do a, uh, under utilities, I can do a spell check. And there it is, spell check. And it's found the one uh, misspelled word in here, and it's giving me these different options to uh, uh, enter in the correct one. I'll just go ahead and say misspelled with two L's, and I want to continue checking with the beginning, yes, and it didn't find any errors, so that's good. Um, and uh, it also has, so you know, spell check is uh, obviously great, and that's a nice thing to have. Uh, it also has a thesaurus, which is really neat. So I can uh, highlight the word document, 
and then go into the utilities menu and there's the thesaurus and this gives me uh, definitions um, for what I'm looking at so a document could also be a permit or certificate or a warrant or a grant uh, different ways to uh, uh, looking for the right word to use in a document uh, that's a great way to uh, uh, to do it so it's got word has a, has a great balance between old and new uh, and it's a, a, a great program you might want to consider downloading and trying out let's go ahead and uh, exit the program we'll go back to exit word with X uh, and I don't need to save that one either so what'd you think of word uh, what other programs you'd like me to try out uh, leave a comment in the uh, below and I'd be happy to look at those programs uh, before I go, I just want to do a special thank you to some of my Patreon supporters. All of you uh, are helping me make this channel happen. Uh, some of you have donated at a higher level, and I wanted to recognize you uh, here. So thank you very much. Uh, so that's it. Uh, why don't you uh, visit our website at freedas.org. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, join us on Twitter. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.